Do God be telling our business? Y'all ever feel like God be telling your business? Like, good morning. Um, Y'all are kind of used to me looking a mess by now. So I will not apologize. I'm actually in the middle of straightening my hair. Um, it is Sunday. I'm saying good morning like it's morning. It is probably late afternoon. Let me see. Excuse my pimple patch. Oh. Where's my phone? All the way over here. It is 4. <laughs> it is 4 p.m. on Sunday. This is my first time picking up the camera today, though. I have plans to, um, you know, start this week's vlog. But, um, yesterday, I had a good time. I had a good time with my brother. I had a good time with my nephew. Um, I put some clips up on Instagram, but I didn't vlog at all. I just needed a break. Um, I was working on some other things. And then some friends came over. My friends came over last night. Um, my niece got in the pool. She really loves to swim. And um, then we like made TikToks and really bad TikToks because you know them, them 30s, they creep up on you fast. I used to be on dance teams. Like when did the eight count become so difficult? I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was funny. That was a good time. But guess where I messed up? I messed up by having like two sips of tequila. Two sips. I was not drunk or tipsy by any means. Um, I just participated in a, a cheers, you know? And I know better. There's a reason why I no longer drink the way that I used to. Because two sips will throw me all the way off. So I did wake up with a headache this morning. I watched church. Um, I watched the late... I watched the late service, uh, I think like the 1130 service of Change Church. Absolutely great message. Um, Pastor Daniels had been on a sabbatical, I think. Um, so this was his first time back preaching in a couple weeks. Um, though the guest pastors did not miss a beat. The message is right on time every time. Um, and I actually text Natalie as soon as it was over and I'm like, I should be a pastor because obviously joking. Um, but I was like, I should be a pastor because this sermon is something the the message was something that I say to her all the time, like almost word for word. I'm like, do pastor, do God be telling our business? Y'all ever feel like God be telling your business? Like you dealing with something and then you go to church, especially online. This church is in Atlanta, in New Jersey. Like I don't know none of these people, and somehow the message was verbatim conversations I've had with multiple people in my life, um, because it's the lesson that I had to learn for sure. And now I try to get other people to understand it. Sometimes uh, they don't be listening. But um, my notes are all the way over there. I ain't got no pants on, so I don't even want to get up. No pants on in front of a window, an external facing window, mind you. Um, but the message was pretty much about how, like, God don't play about you. And um, it was from Nahum chapter, chapter 1 verse 2 and 3 maybe? Or chapter... I think it was one verse two and three where this was one of the first times if not the only time where god was giving a prophet a message that wasn't directly for his people was, the message was actually so nahum was the prophet god was talking to nahum telling him what to tell the enemy of his people and i believe this is one of the only times he spoke to the enemy and not to his people but basically it was like, you touch my, my children again, you gonna F around and find out. And that's basically what it said. But um, before he got into that, he was saying that like, let God handle it. Because there's some things that we just not gonna handle right. And whatever repercussions the, the people that did you wrong had to face, if you don't handle it right or let God handle it, you gonna get those repercussions too. Like, you don't, y'all don't, do you not realize that? Like... Sometimes we get so, um, not addicted, but so caught up on the principle of things that we feel like it's our right to react. But that reaction only, one, gives whoever's, you know, messing with you the power when you supposed to give that power to God and let him handle it and you go about your business and do what he told you to do. Like, reaction will still get you in trouble. So, yeah, God's, the guy gonna handle them because he... He don't play about you, but he gonna handle you too. If you don't, like what? If you decide to handle it instead of letting him handle it, it just, and it's really a lesson, a lesson about self-control too. 
which is why I um maybe I'd be around a lot of hot heads I don't know but it's just like I'm, I feel like I'm constantly telling people like why are you letting them get you outside your body why are you letting them get you outside your element why are you letting that like do things make me mad too yes but guess what I do I do what I can do by controlling where I am who I communicate with like I tell people all the time you you know you the one paying that phone bill right and we was talking last week and you said this is a hypothetical <laughs> hypothetical conversation we was talking last week and you was just talking about how you forgot to pay your phone bill or you was a couple dollars short for your phone bill so you the one struggling to pay that phone bill right right okay so when that friend or that that guy or that girl that you talking to or even that family member calls you and you know every time you answer the phone they're gonna throw your whole day off they're gonna throw your whole um attitude off like you just gonna be you gonna suffer from answering a phone call that you know you don't have to answer and I feel like there was a point um right after I moved to Dallas where I feel like I was struggling to communicate with everybody um if you know me you know like my family is tight we don't have I mean every family has drama but like we're a, a very boring family uh, for the most part and so there's never a time where I don't, if my mom was calling me, okay, let me caveat. Because in high school and college, if I was out and my mama was blowing my phone up because I she wanted to know where I was, I might have ignored her. <laughs> I'm not that rebellious teen anymore. So, um, but now, like, there's not a time. Like, it don't matter what I'm doing. If my mom and my daddy call me, especially since we don't live in the same state, I'm answering. Unless I'm asleep and literally don't know the phone is ringing. I'm going to answer the phone. If my brother calls me, I'm going to answer the phone. If my sister-in-law calls me, I'm going to answer the phone. Um, but there was a point when I, when we first moved here that I was not getting along with my brother. I was not getting along with my sister-in-law. And because of that, my mother was getting on my nerves. <laughs> and I remember having a conversation with her one day and having to tell her, and it broke my heart, I'm bawling while I'm saying this, having to tell her that, look, I don't want to talk about this. Um, you know, whatever's going on with me and my brother and, and his wife, like, we're having some communication breakdowns. Like, I intellectually understand that. I know where they're coming from. And I've always said, like, I've kind of been blessed and cursed with the ability to see both sides. I know where they're coming from. But I know what I stand for. And neither of us backing down. So let's just give each other some space. Let's give each other some space. Let everybody cool off. Whatever, whatever. My mother, though, is one of those peacemaker type people. And so it was like every, it felt like, I don't know if this is for, for sure, for certain, but it felt like every day she was calling me, telling me, oh, you should do this. Oh, you should be the bigger person. And I'm like, I do. I, I am the oldest. I give them that. I give them that. But um, I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm trying to remember how I felt at that time. I'm not, I, I felt like they were preying on my people pleasing um, tendencies back then to just assume that I was going to conform to whatever was going on. Like make everybody else comfortable, Ashley can adjust. Which again, another blessing and a curse. I'll be the flexible one if, if, if the situation comes down to it. Um, or even just because, like, sometimes that's just my nature, depending on what the, the situation is. Um, but in this particular case, honestly, y'all, I can't even remember all the situations that we was arguing about or whatever. Um, it was just a lot of tension in the area. Everybody was going through their own personal stuff, and then the personal stuff came into the business stuff, and then the business stuff became personal stuff. Like, it was just a lot. And um, for whatever reason, at this point, I just felt like, no, I'm not going to be the one to take the short end of the stick this time, and so I'm not going to... Um, bow down in a sense but my mother was just like oh but just to keep the peace just because we're so used to having such a um a close family like boring no drama that she was like okay but just to keep the peace like I heard you but just to keep the peace say this or do this or when they do this you do this and I'm like no and I remember having that conversation and and tears running down my face standing in front of my office and telling my mama, look, I don't want to talk about this no more. And if that's all you're going to call me for, I'm going to stop answering the phone. And that's my mama. And I know a lot of people feel like that about other people, other family members. You feel like you owe them something for whatever reason. But at some point, one, you got to stop reacting. And two, you got to stop 
allowing people to come into your space to interrupt what you and God got going on, to interrupt whatever you've been working on mentally, physically, emotionally, like, and they just blow it all up. And then now you got to start over. So I'm like, at this point, I was like, I had really been working on my anxiety levels. I had really been like, I was meditating a lot just to be able to try to control my mind. This is before medication or anything. Um, always had issues with anxiety and like ruminating and stuff like that. And so I was doing a lot of like nature walks and spending a long time, some alone time wasn't necessarily by choice i was in a new city and didn't really know anybody um and so i was doing a lot of things to like recenter myself spending time money i was going to acupuncture all these different things why would i sacrifice all that hard work <laughs> to pick up the phone for somebody that's gonna piss me off like when i know it's not an emergency and there's nothing else that you want like it was becoming a pattern and and at some point it's my fault for playing into the pattern y'all i'm rambling but anyway so because i had experienced these things i start to realize or like recognize these patterns um or like my friends and people around me playing into the patterns of others um and letting other people control their emotions control their day and i'm like we don't have to we don't have to do this and also if i'm telling you like hey that person really because i'm on the outside looking in right so i'm talking to a friend and i'm like I can recognize that your friend, as your friend, that this person isn't really good for you and it's becoming a pattern that they do this and then you react and then you call me to vent about it. Now, I'm a great listener, great listener, I'm, but I'm always be honest and I'm all, will always give you my opinion when asked. And it might not always be nice, but you asked. So now you, you bothering my, on my space, like, now you're bothering my area, my mental, physical, emotional area, because you're doing something that you know you're not supposed to do and you need me to help regulate your nervous system. I'm gonna stop answering the phone because like there's no reason that, I, I love my friends, I really do. I love anybody that I can like communicate with on a daily basis or whatever. Love y'all to death. But I have worked too hard. To literally be living in this our Lord's year of 2024 <laughs> to even make it to this day alive. I've done way too much work. I've God has done too much work. Like there's there's no way I'ma let you dysregulate my nervous system and in my peace because you can't figure out how to protect yours. Just saying. Um and that's basically what the sermon was about. Like let God handle it. Stop letting people, like, we know somebody is doing wrong by us. And we think that by being quiet or by walking away or whatever, that it's ignoring it. And that's the that's a weakness. That's showing that we're weak. And so we get so attached to it's the principle of it. So I have the right to disrespect you because you disrespected me. Or I have the right to do this because you did that. Um... It's always retaliation. It's always reaction. Whatever whatever you can do to that person ain't even touching what God can do to them. So why not give it to God? Because he don't play about you. So he gonna get them. And I think the thing, um, other thing that he mentioned was like, and when when the, the person, when God gets them, it's not always gonna be you to see because it's not for you to sit there and be like ah god got you like that's not the point either <laughs> and i think that's a lot of times why people get so attached to the retaliation um and to the principle because we get to see the downfall of the other person but if you think about it god don't ever want us to revel in the downfall of another human being like that's not that's not what he wants <laughs> so he gonna get them and just believe that he got them but you ain't got to see it and you ain't got to worry about it. You just keep going. You keep going about your business. Keep doing what he told you to do. Um, Yeah, I don't... That 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 was a lot. Um, As you can see, I feel very passionate about that subject. And the fact that that was the message today, I was like, thank you for that reminder. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder. Um, And there were so many other points in the message. Like, there was like five um, points. But even, even the... I love Pastor Darius because even teach I was like as many y'all if y'all know 
if you don't know um i grew up in private lutheran schools um in st louis missouri and from preschool to high school graduation private lutheran schools and there were so many things i had to memorize <laughs> throughout that time um beyond the books of the bible the books of the bible were probably memorized before i even got into the school system because of vacation bible school and like all that stuff but memorizing the bible the, the entire catechism i can't even intellectually remember what the catechism is for at this point and i'm i don't think it's used in like baptist denominations and stuff like that but within the lutheran denomination and i want to say in the catholic too we had to, because um, my dad's side of the family was Catholic. Um, I believe they used the catechism too. All these things we had to memorize. Specific verses, specific books of the Bible, um, creeds, all types of stuff. And, and those things are just memorization, right? So I always say like, yeah, I had a lot of religion-based schooling. Um, but now I'm getting to learn for myself. And as soon as he said where the teaching was from this morning, I said, now... Out of all the memorization, I did. Do I remember a Nahum? No. Who was Nahum? So, like, and, and it's a book. I believe it's a short book from what he said. But I'm like, they never even mentioned him. Not as, like, a big player in the Bible. And maybe he wasn't, but I don't know. That just blew my mind. Like, not that I think I know everything about the Bible. But, um, and obviously, I'm, like, relearning a lot of things and finding out a lot of new things. But the way he preaches, like, the messages that he chooses. And then, in some point in the sermon, he was like, well, how do we know this? And then he cites other books and other passages. And I'm just like, that's that's the type of pastoring I'm looking for in this season of my life. A lot of, um, and I know I talked about this on the last vlog, like, a lot of the reason I felt disconnected to certain churches because it just feels like a motivational speech. And I can read that in a book. I motivate myself all day. I wrote a book that got 100 affirmations in it. I, I understand the, the motivation part of it. Prosperity gospel of it all. Give me, feed me. Give me the meat and the potatoes. Like that's the, though it's the complicated part of, I guess, the relationship with God. Because the Bible is, it's old. It's, you know, there's parables. Like there's a lot to dissect. G give me that let me help i'm i'm ready for that challenge in this season of my life because i really truly truly want to understand what god wants me to do what, what role i'm playing what he expects of me what he expects of others like what the plan is that's what i want so I, that's what i really appreciate about pastor darius um yeah okay so i did take some medicine and as i've been talking the migraine is disappearing um so i'm gonna go finish up my hair it's already Sunday evening, so there's no reason to get myself together. I'm just going to um, probably hop back in front of the computer. So all that talk last week that I did about um, working, not much has been done. At least not the bulk of things. So I have some work to be done, and obviously that's going to be seen in my design vlog. Um, I got some deadlines coming up this week. So I need to work through that. So this week um, is going to be really work heavy which update on my 40 day fast it's hard it's hard it's quiet around here i'm not scrolling on my phone um i have been watching a lot of uh youtube vlogs for multiple reasons um research purposes um but also just kind of like studying the craft of vlogging um and also editing i like my nails i did them um this one's already messing up i did a way better job this time than i did last time but i got a little sloppy with the top coat um but yeah studying like the art of vlogging and editing seeing like what the vloggers that um that I actually watch and I've been you know researching some newer ones or not even newer vloggers but being introduced being newly introduced to different vloggers um I feel like before the only type of vlogging I watched was like design related business related that type of stuff but now I'm like really into the lifestyle and the beauty um content and other content creators as well so just kind of like studying the craft like what are what are people really drawing to and it kind of reminded me that everything doesn't have to be so production heavy though i do want there to be a, a production element of my content because i really do truly enjoy that um i want to study that i want to perfect it i want to start getting into the more cinematic um 
looks of things but i truly love organic content obviously i've been sitting in front of this camera talking for 22 minutes like obviously i love the rawness of it all too um so it's taking the place of like just mindlessly scrolling on um social media to more targeted consumption so yeah i've been watching a lot of youtube listening to podcasts i've been reading um like i said i spent the day with um, my brother and them yesterday morning and then my friends in the evening so it's actually making me more social, don't you think? Not scrolling on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like my, it's still hard. Cause when I pick up the phone, I'm like, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Especially when the I put the, the settings on my phone so that I only have one hour of like social media apps, Monday through Friday. Then I have like a couple hours on Saturday and Sunday, but I'm still trying not to use those couple hours. And then like at 10 every night, um, my phone shuts down those apps so I can't like I can click on them and then it'll say oh you you reached a time limit for this app or whatever um and I'd be like rolling my eyes and obviously it says like you can override it I'm trying not to do that at all um I did have to change the settings a little bit because at first it like wouldn't even let me google stuff I'm like dang like I lock myself out of everything um and if you know me you know I'm a I'm if I hear a word I ain't never heard before if I hear of an event I've never heard like I'm googling it so I need a google to be available because that's how I learn um <laughs> or at least I just like to research random things so that's really hard but it's going well I already see um, my screen time like time significantly decrease within this week so we'll see how that keeps going there's like a family of bunnies that live outside my window and they are so cute if they weren't wild I would take them in um always wanted a bunny my dad always says no because he was too close to a, a rodent it might even be in the rodent family i don't know but they're cute um i should get outside y'all okay to close this out i have a confession i skipped my friday faith walk simply because i was so tired people think that vlogging and like content creators don't do anything all day but like talk to themselves obviously again i've been talking to myself for the last 25 minutes but it's a lot of work and I, I feel like I had a pretty full week last week. Fuller. <laughs> they, I might be looking at me like, girl, you don't do nothing all day. Um, managing a chronic illness and working in a field where like energy and creativity and like being upfront with people, or not with people, but like presentable in a way, that's a lot of energy. I was mentally tired. Um, so yeah, I did not do that, but I have been journaling. Uh, sticking to my blue blue sticking to my bible plan um on the bible app and spending some time in silence so i do feel like i've still been getting the purpose them bunnies be running fast too i still do feel like i'm sticking to the purpose of my scrolling fast which is to connect with god and to not um to control my input a little better so that i, I can um have a more targeted output if that makes sense like i want to control what i'm consuming or just have a better grasp on it i won't say control but um yeah i'm crusty and ashy and i probably will stay like that i'm gonna finish straightening my hair i feel like i'm like overdue for a keratin treatment because this humidity ain't no joke but my hair's healthy so we're gonna just be grateful for that so um this might be a vlog in itself my spiritual rant i don't know um but yeah we'll see what the rest of the week holds i'll be back this day that god has given me i'm not gonna waste this joy deep down inside me i'm not gonna shake been stressed for so long so stuck in my own way